Hi, I'm the Catalyst. My name is Lanre Olushola. Welcome to my Be Transformed podcast. This podcast is drawn from a series of conversations with some of my very good friends, coaching colleagues, and associates on Clubhouse. Now, on this particular episode, you would hear new ideas, receive inspiration, and encounter knowledge like never before. And this will transform your life. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts after listening. Shalom. Our topic today is overcoming self-sabotaging behaviors and habits. Now, each and every one of us at some point in our life, in some area of our life, right, we have one type of self-sabotaging behavior. One, some people have more than one. So what is yours, right? How do you sabotage yourself? When do you sabotage yourself? Where do you sabotage yourself? Self-sabotaging behaviors refer to conscious and unconscious thought patterns, beliefs, and behaviors that hold us back and stop us from doing what we need to do, when we need to do it, and how we need to do it. So, do you know why you sabotage yourself? Are you aware of when? You are self-sabotaging. Do you know how you self-sabotage? Do you even understand what exactly self-sabotaging behaviors look like? Tonight, we're going to be answering some of these questions. I've got three incredible panelists. I'm still expecting one of them, a mecca. But we've got two able life coaches, NLP practitioners, psychotherapists, and Dr. Lillian is even a medical doctor. Wow. Tonight, we're going to be dealing with the issues. So, do you find that you, oh, Prof is here. Good evening, Prof. How are you? Good evening, sir. I'm very well, good. thank you. I'm having it's issues. Good. Just, just you, got in now. It's all right. It's all right, buddy. Welcome. So, we're diving straight into it. So, do you procrastinate? Do you blame other people for your problems and your challenges? Do you abandon tasks? You know, when things don't go smoothly or when things don't go the way that you expect them? Those are three self-sabotaging behaviors. But, you know what? There are several. And we're going to dive into it tonight. And I'm going to start off with any talk. Anytime, what does self sabotage? What does it look like to you? Okay, um, good evening, everyone, again. So, self sabotage, first of all, to me, is everything that I do that makes me stand in my own way. It's my progress paralysis. So, anytime that I feel like I'm hindering myself, anything Thing that I do that obstructs me, that blocks my way, that makes me feel stuck, unable to maximize my potentials. Whether that thing is subconscious or unconscious or conscious to me, whatever it may be, as long as it's keeping me stuck in one spot without allowing me to move, I am the one actually doing it to myself. People are not doing it to me. I can't blame others for it. It's totally being generated from within me. And this quality within me is the same quality that is keeping me at the same spot, that is not releasing me, making me free to move and make progress in life. So when I self-sabotage, I'm doing some things, whether in my mind, mental behavior, or physical behavior, or in my emotions, or in my actual actions, I'm doing something that I might not be conscious about that is keeping me at the same spot. It, it Staying at the same spot is not what anyone 
desires. No one desires to languish in the same spot. We are all striving human beings. We all want to move forward in our relationships, in our businesses, in our with our ideas. We want to make progress with our health, with our endeavors. But unconsciously to us, we all have all these little demons in us that is self-generated, that just holds us in one spot. So things like shame, guilt, the need to be perfect, perfectionism, giving up easily, avoiding things, avoid, we call it avoidant behavior, being shy, hurting, you know, some people hurting is a continuous tense for them. You know, hurting should stop. But some people keep hurting. They keep saying, I'm hurting. And so because of that, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't go into another relationship. I can't do move into the next business. Pride, conceitedness, expansiveness, procrastination. Some people live in unforgiveness some people live in guilt some people live to please others people pleasing tenders some people like to some people feel entitled some people are gullible some people live their lives being dependent on people some people live paranoid lives because they've been hurt they continuously live lives of sus suspecting people everyone around them so all these little little things Everyone has one or the other. Some even have a combination of them. But they, in one way or the other, keep us grounded at the same spot. It's like standing up and you're the one holding your legs and refusing to release it to go. And until we deal with all these things, all these self-sabotaging behaviors and habits, we will not be able to leave the seat where we are sitting. We will not be able to progress into life. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you very much, Anton. I mean, Anton is, you know, keeping it real. He's shooting it like it's hot. Shame, guilt, perfectionism, avoidance, shyness, consistent hurting, pain, pride, procrastination. When you are stuck on the same spot based on your own actions or lack of actions, you know, he says that um, self-sabotage is self-generated. You, you you keep yourself grounded and it's the hindrance and the barriers that you personally create for yourself. Lillian, from your perspective, what does self-sabotage, what does it look like? So beautiful summary, Anita. And that was like, you completely just like hit the nail on the head. So for me, I always love to go into definitions because it, it allows things to get clearer to me. So what is the definition of sabotage? It's kind of where I usually would start. And it's described as a deliberate action aimed at limiting an effort through obstruction, disruption, subversion, and destruction. Those are like pretty intense, right? That's like you're going to war. But then when mm. you now put self in front of it, it means you're now engaging in patterns of behavior that creates problems for you in your daily life, every single day, and then interferes with this long-standing goals that you have. Because I believe we all know that there's greatness within us, right? We, you know, what's life all about? Achieving our purpose, our mission, our mandate, and our desires, which is like good health, having wealth, having productive relationships. So we want, you know, to be effective, fulfilled, and efficient. However, all of a sudden, you be, you become your own enemy, right? So what what I've always found to also be a problem is that I I engage in self sabotage behavior. For example, when I forget what I am, that I am this bundle of you know I'm a bio, psycho, social, and spiritual being that has a conscious and a subconscious mind. So a lot of times you I focus on just that conscious, for example, and forget about the largest subconscious aspect of me that has all kinds of influences, both those that are generated from me and generated uh, externally. And a lot of times it's when there's no self mastery of that subconscious mind, right? It's untrained, it's unfiltered, and, and I'm not channeling it correctly. So it takes over. So I like to group, uh, I, I have an acronym called tears, where you're going to either have tears of joy or tears of sadness depending on, on how 
you cultivate yourself are you going to sabotage or are you going to be successful and do it that's when you start engaging in thoughts and beliefs such as self doubt low self esteem you self deprecate thinking by making yourself lower everybody will feel more comfortable with you the thing about self deprecation is people will actually like you but they have no respect for you and they actually think that you're incompetent so that has its own issues you self efface you know self limiting beliefs it just you know it just continues a vicious cycle then emotions such as fear anxiety you know starts to come up then one starts to exhibit actions based on all these underlying thoughts beliefs and emotions of procrastination acting out you're being aggressive or passive aggressive you're being vindictive you're being paranoid uh you get into this like crazy competition like somebody is chasing you um and if it's a lot of people who are corporate workers they start getting late you know uh turning in assignments late showing up late uh or engaging in chronic worry and think because you're engaged in worry you're actually doing something but you're getting in your own way and one that i feel like a lot of people um it's not self generated from us but we engage in it and it messes us up internally is substance abuse right you start now using you know alcohol different kinds of drugs or some sort of some form of addiction then the results become you're non productive you're stagnant what i like to call wilderness journey right what's supposed to take 7 days takes 40 years um you get into depression you completely dysfunction and overall self sabotage to me just ends up being two words emotional dysregulation thank you i'm done speaking Wow, wow. You know, um Lillian, I like those definitions. There were four there were four things that you said. I picked up two, obstruction, destruction. What were the other two? Subversion and disruption. Fantastic, fantastic. I love that. I love that. So you are the heart of your own obstruction. You are the cause of your own destruction. You are the cause of your own sub- subversion and you are the cause of your own disruption. Wow. It ultimately leads to dysfunctionality, substance abuse, fear, anxiety, sadness and all of those negative things. Wow. Wow, is anybody learning? Is anybody hearing that you know, hearing themselves, seeing themselves through all of these definitions, right? tonight we need to make that commitment to break free from self sabotaging behaviors we need to commit to overcoming self sabotaging behaviors so let's take prof prof you know what does self sabotaging um behaviors what does it look like to you all right thank you very much sir. um thank you very much lilian for um, that uh, complete definition and uh, mr anderson Thank you for actually defining and then going out to list out um, some of the things that would um, that we use to limit um, sabotage our own behaviors. I mean, sabotage sabotage our own success. All right. So I, I would want to stay a little with um, uh, Lillian's subconscious processes because that's where I'm particularly much more concerned now. Every behavior basically has a what's it called? Has a payoff. There's a reason you repeat a behavior. So now, now, now this this is particularly interesting because the behavior is limiting you. It is sabotaging your success. But then you still keep repeating it. So there is a payoff, all right? But basically, sabotaging, self-sabotaging behaviors are um, behaviors you you use to stop yourself from. doing the things you ought to do go in the direction that you ought to go so you're creating your own hindrance like the, like um, both speakers have said earlier you're creating your own hindrance you're creating your own stumbling block you're putting blocks in your own way of success and sometimes these things are not i mean if you look at it, it doesn't make sense how would somebody stop himself from succeeding so for that behavior to be sustained there is a payoff right and, and it is it is it is in understanding what that payoff is what what am i getting from um behaving in this way because if if, if there is no beha- behaviors are rewarded because i mean they are repeated because they are rewarded all right the reward is a reinforcer now understanding the payoff for sabotaging behaviors what you're getting from them will be the first step in taking them out of the way all right i'm already ahead of myself now but really most people 
don't even know why so there is some subconscious processes going on that is leading to these behaviors happening and repeating recently i discovered that one of the reasons why people don't move forward is because sometimes they subconsciously identified with whatever it is that is that state that you're trying to move away from so there is a subconscious identification and the thing with the subconscious mind is that every time you have an identity it works to protect that identity so once you've made a subconscious identification with a place a state that is not even positive right your subconscious mind will always guide that identity such that on the outside right at the conscious level you might be taking steps to want to walk away from that but because there is a subconscious identification with that state your subconscious mind now stops you basically create scenarios that stops you from functioning because the subconscious mind is designed to protect your identity right um in summary self-sabotaging behaviors are behaviors that I mean, we deploy and stop ourselves from going in the direction that we want to go, making the moves that we want to make, doing the things that we want to do. And sometimes these behaviors could be both conscious and subconscious. But the key to understanding how to get out of them is to know what the payoff for the conscious behaviors are. What are the payoff? To get off the subconscious program, we need to learn to disidentify with the state that is limiting us. I, I hope I've been a little clear. Thank you very much, sir. Fantastic. I like this perspective. So there's a positive intention behind every self-sabotaging behavior. Let me take that again. There's a positive intention. There's a there's a reward. There's a benefit. There's a payoff behind every self-sabotaging behavior. There is a semblance of an identity, right, that you relate with, that you want to hold on to. Every time you self-sabotage. So, the question is, why do I keep repeating this behavior? If, in the words of Lillian, it is obstructive. In the words of Lillian, if it is destructive. In the words of Lillian, if it is disruptive. And in the words of Lillian, if it is subversive. Why should I be repeating this? In any terms, words, why should I be hindering myself? Why should I be keeping myself grounded, right, on one spot? Why should I be self-sabotaging? You are self-sabotaging simply because there's an identity that is attached to it. <clears throat> there is a benefit that you are getting from it. There is a payoff. There is a reward right and you are constantly repeating it so that you can constantly get that reward now beyond just that identity beyond just that payoff beyond just that benefit right why do people why else do people sabotage themselves any okay so um the three basic things that's coming to my mind right now um the first two factors is usually because of low self-esteem and low self-acceptance then also the need to protect ourselves from harm um low self-acceptance when we don't have um when we don't accept ourselves when we believe that we are flawed when we believe that we have a defect, when we believe that um, there is something that the heavens owe us, we are not complete, we are not enough, when we believe that, um, uh, when we keep standing at heaven's gate, waiting for our change, when we believe compared to others, it's all these things that I'm talking about, they are all beliefs. And most times, a belief is usually unexamined. It's unexpressed. Unexamined means that you're confident about something that you don't have clarity about yet. So who told you that you have a defect? Who told you that you are not enough? Who told you that you are flawed? These are some of the issues 
that make us to self jeopardize so um to self sabotage so a lot of people self sabotage because they are not yet accepting themselves 100% absolutely and beyond that they have low self esteem low self esteem has to do with your belief that you are not able you are not worthy to engage in the affairs of life that you are not adequate enough you do not qualify to engage in a particular area when it comes to beauty you can't engage when it comes to taking your business and uh, heads on when it comes to pursuing your goals you cannot engage that feeling of unworthiness not being qualified enough to engage in the affairs of life is what we call low self esteem so when we have a cocktail of low self esteem and low self acceptance it leads to things like shame it leads to things like guilt when we are ashamed we are we feel that there is something wrong with us there's a defect and we feel that we could be subject to ridicule we could be subject to criticism we could be subject to shaming public shaming when we feel guilty it's because we feel that there's something wrong with what we've done and because there's something wrong with what we've done we do not qualify for a chance to change the feeling of guilt guilt can fester for so long because of a belief that we are not qualified or we don't qualify for a chance to change but we never remain the same we are never the same this the us that is now is not the same us tomorrow and will not be we will not be the same person next tomorrow we're constantly changing we're constantly adapting we're constantly growing so at the root of every self sabotaging behavior we want to every we want to feel safe so there is a lot of safety in putting off what i'm supposed to do now till tomorrow because i'm afraid that i might fail at it or because of my reputations of time past where i have failed or i've given up at my projects i feel just, i feel that if i do something else that is more pleasing to me than pursuing that dream or putting it off until monday then it makes me feel safe there's a place of safety in procrastination it's an unconscious feeling so most of this self jeopardizing uh, uh, sabotaging behaviors and patterns at the end of the day they may give us a false sense of safety in the immediate when i'm shy and i'm i'm, I'm exhibiting avoidant tendencies i have stage fright it's because i want to stay at the back of the class because i'm avoiding harm or pain So every feeling in this world whether they are primary feelings or secondary feelings they come to either keep us safe or they help us to flourish or spread our seed So that is the issue be with all self sabotaging behaviors they come to give us a false sense of safety it they've come to help us to prevent us from lunging out from taking a risk and because taking a risk will make us fall prey, prey to harm or danger we decide to keep safe the same with self uh, low self acceptance and low self esteem so these three factors are the main factors that are to blame for every self sabotaging behavior the feeling and fear of harm low self acceptance and low self esteem thank you very much sir Thank you very very much. Wow. Wow. So I'm going to go to Lilian and I'm going to ask Lilian. Lilian from your perspective and experience, uh, why do people sabotage themselves? And it's a nice 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 explanation there. You know, and I think it's a it's a difficult one to answer um unless you you are on a quest for knowledge yourself, unless you're on a quest to learn and understand. uh who and what you are and how you are and i always go back to that i i'm such a big uh definitions person i'm a big like root very root cause analysis based person so i think a lot of people sabotage because we don't a lot of people don't really know 
who and what they are. If you don't know who and what you are, how you are, and then how that is to other people and to your external world, and how everything is interacting together. You don't even know the definition. You don't even know that you you're engaging in self sabotage. I don't think anybody wants to, you know, destroy themselves, disrupt themselves, subvert themselves, and obstruct themselves. So I think it's just really a fundamental lack of awareness of, like we said, your identity. Knowing that there's all that greatness in you, there's all that capacity in you. You know,、uh, really understanding that you know things like quantum physics. Really, just kind of really understanding your element, so to speak, and then not knowing what lies beneath. Okay, and what lies beneath is this huge subconscious. Then, when you don't know that thoughts become things, because that's just the, the law of the universe, and that's what it's about. You are just like, you know, you're just like open bar. So to speak, you just open, you know, open for business to anything, all kinds of influences, your own internal thoughts, everybody else's internal and external thoughts, you know, false cultural attitudes and beliefs, because you don't really know what lies beneath, you don't know who you are, and you don't know the laws that govern things. So when you don't know that, if you keep repeating, you know, a certain thought process, when you're like, you know what, I'm going to start my own podcast, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and you, you're raising your resonance, and then you say, hmm, well, wait a second, if I start this, you know, ah,、oh, what if I, what if I make a mistake? I had a client say that. What if I, what if I make, make, a, what if I said something wrong? What if I, I said something grammatically wrong? And I was like, whoa, that's that's information for you that it could happen. But you're excited. You want to do this. You know, it doesn't really matter. But she now starts to repeat that little part of her that says she's gonna make a mistake. She's gonna fumble. And you keep you keep on repeating that pattern. Unfortunately, for most people, your brain continues to learn until the day you die. So whatever you you're, you're putting in those neural grooves, it's what will be. It's what will be. And like what.、Um, As Eric was said, we're also resistant to change. We want to maintain those things, so you keep on digging in these neural、uh, patterns of "I cannot do it. I'm not going to start this. I'm afraid people are going to laugh at me," and your thoughts continue to become your reality. And then I think another reason is people are then not properly equipped with the tools that they need, because it's. I think until the end, because we're always going to be a work in progress while we're trying to balance the magnificent creatures that we are. This is something that's gonna always continue. Even when you've achieved self mastery, there's always more to learn. And because of the awareness of this, is why coaching is like the, one of the top professions that we're seeing in our time. Because we don't have those tools. There's so many layers to learn on. When I am engaging in this thought pattern, what do I do? I don't think people are aware of it. You know, how do I use cognitive reformation, right, to stop what I'm doing? How do I learn and understand? One of my favorite tools, which is emotional intelligence. So I think people are not aware, and so they just continue to engage in this like negative thought patterns, and then they don't know either how to access, and they don't have the proper tools needed to combat and counteract those things that they're experiencing. Thank you. I'm done speaking. Wow, that is incredible. So Lillian talks about. You know, ignorance of who you are, what you are, lack of awareness about self, lack of awareness about your value, about your relationships, about your purpose, about your identity, ignorance about your subconscious, ignorance about your thoughts, your beliefs, ignorance about your emotions. You are ill-equipped,、um, and you lack emotional intelligence. Wow! And it talks about low self-esteem, low self-acceptance. Um, feelings of being incomplete and not enough, need to protect yourself.、Um, you know, having negative, limiting, and disempowering beliefs,、um, having feelings of inadequacy, having feelings of being unqualified,、um, shame, guilt, lack of safety, fear of failure, fear of success. And then I'm going to take、uh, Prof as well, Prof. You know why do people, apart from you know、um, identity, apart from you know the rewards, the payoff, the benefits, why else do people self sabotage? Uh, uh,、um, 
Okay, so there, there are a host of reasons, a host of other reasons. I'll stick with two. And I would want to a little elaborate on uh, um, the fear of the fear of failing. Exactly. Um, some people are more afraid of, of failure than than they are actually of even, um, and they are excited about succeeding. And the fear of failure is stronger for them than the anticipation of success. So. Um, if there is a slight chance that they are going to fail on a task, they normally just just uh, sabotage on that task. They're not because their abilities are not. In fact, the few who even dare try would actually try playing not to lose. They're not playing to win, but they're doing that thing not to lose. So uh, when, you, when you come into an activity with the mentality of not losing, you're careful. And because you're careful, you are not optimized. You're not going to put in your best effort. You're, not, you're trying to, what's the word, manage the backlash. Hey, thank you very much for listening to this amazing podcast conversation with The Catalyst. I'm sure it was of great value. Please go ahead, share with your friends, and bring your family members to also listen. You can also follow me on all my social media platforms via at Larry Olushola, or visit my website www.thecatalystng.com. Now, to book a catalysis or coaching session or therapy with me, please call plus 234 809 888 or email me at hello at thecatalystng.com. Shalom.